Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I would like to go over a question that I keep receiving. What is the most stressful thing about your job? Now there's a lot of stressful things about this job, but there's one thing that you have absolutely no control over whatsoever, and all you can do is defend yourself when it happens. I'm talking about dealing with equipment that breaks down when it's well past its life expectancy. That's right guys, there are a lot of hospitals out there that have equipment that is way past its life expectancy. Just in the last month or two, I've dealt with a Jackson table that was from 2002. I had a light source that was from 2002. I had a 7500 plasma, argon plasma ESU. That was from 2002, all in the same month, mind you. All three of them went bad. And guess what? Every single time that those things went bad, the users made it seem like it was my fault. These units are five, six years past their life expectancy. And then today, I didn't have to deal with it, but one of my associates did. Another 7,500 argon plasma went bad. Or maybe it didn't go bad. Maybe it's a user error. It's hard to say because older electronics like that that are used in such a rough environment like an operating room, they can have intermittent problems. There's a lot of seams in the floors between buildings and when they move them between buildings, they open doors with them. They set equipment on top of them. Some of them might have liquids that are spilled into them over the course of a decade or so. It's the most stressful thing because they make it seem like it's your fault. And the thing is, is unless you are very, very resourceful, what can you do? What can you do? I'll tell you, the standard practice is you go to the manufacturer and you ask them for a letter of end of life and you present that to the customer. Now, I've only been at this job for six or seven months now, and I've had to deal with this several times. And it's extremely stressful because in some ways they want to kind of put it off on you like maybe you're not competent enough to uh, fix the device but uh, the other thing I've got right now I have four or five vigilance to uh, cardiac output monitors there are, you know the customers say that there's something probably wrong with it there they don't seem to want to zero out well normally in these situations like a cardiac output monitor I'm telling you what I'm probably gonna do. I would normally ship that device back to the OEM and have them calibrate it and recertify it officially before I put it back in one of my cardiovascular op operating rooms. But I can't do that because they no longer support it. They've no longer supported these things since 2017, 2016, something like that. So they're well past their life expectancy as well. And here we are, they're looking at me like, can't you just piecemeal them back together, you know, use a part from this one, use a part from that one, put them together, and then hopefully have a unit? No, I can't. Uh, sometimes I can, you know, if it's cables or maybe a display or a uh, membrane keypad or something, maybe you can do something like that. I'm very resourceful. But when it's something like a cardiac output monitor or let's say an argon plasma, I had an argon plasma that keeps popping fuses randomly. It's, it's not even like I can repeat it continuously. It's, it would randomly pop a fuse. What do you do then? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. That thing is done. <laughs> 7,500 is done. Absolutely done. There's a certain time and place where you've gotten your money's worth on this device. So, guys, there's a lot of stressful things that we deal with. We deal with being shorthanded. We deal with metrics. But I'll tell you what. Very few things come off like when a piece of equipment is unrepairable and you have to contact your customer and tell them that they're going to have to cancel cases or something because it's not your fault. There's nothing that you can do. And then they start laying it thick on you like it's your fault and like they can't buy another one because it would be a capital equipment emergency purchase and they don't have the money. Well, I'll tell you what, Biomeds. Is not your problem if they don't have the money to buy an 18 year old piece of equipment replacement okay they should have started planning on that 10 years ago so if and when you run into these situations is not your fault 
do your due diligence, document it, and then go ahead and search the inventory for all the other units that they have currently in inventory and present them with a list and tell them, hey, these ones are in the same boat. There's nothing that you can do. When they fail, they're done. They're absolutely done. So at my facility, which is a huge facility, they got money. They can buy equipment. It's just there's been so many years where people have been band-aid fixing stuff and piecemealing it together. And we're not going to do that anymore. All right. All you're going to be doing is chasing your tail. And there's certain items that we're not going to do that to anyway, like a cardiac output monitor. The last thing you want in the middle of a cardiac case is for your monitor screen to go out or for your readings to just start wandering off into the oblivion, which has happened on some of these units. So, guys, start getting rid of that old equipment. It's time. You know, you get past 10 years life expectancy, start planning out that you're going to have to replace it. And don't stress it. It's not your fault. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I know I am. I'm going to try and chillax out there. Thanks for watching.